Well, good morning. On behalf of the entire athletic department, we want to thank you for coming out this morning. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, just a quick rundown and order of events for today. We'll hear remarks from the three individuals at the table, beginning first with Coach Peterson, followed by Director of Athletics, Jennifer Cohen, and finally from Coach Lake. Um, following Coach R Lake's remarks, we'll open it up for questions from the media. We'll have mics on either side, so just raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. And um, following questions, there'll be a chance for one-on-ones with Coach Lake. They'll be in the far corner. So anyone interested in that, please gather over in that area. So with that, I'll turn it over to Coach Peterson. My favorite thing. <laughs> this is um, interesting. It's uh, like a combination between a funeral and a wedding. But it's more of a wedding. So, um, yeah, I just want to start by saying how appreciative and grateful I am of these last six years. Um, you know, you come over here and you, you don't know exactly what you're getting yourself into, but it was really everything I hoped it would be. Um, the support, um, President Kalse, Jen Cohen, uh, second to none. You know, you, you hear things from the outside and uh, you hope and you know about the great Husky fan base and none of that disappointed. It was awesome. Um, I learned so much, the connections that I made um, with the players, people in this community have been, have been game changing and life changing and it's been, it's been awesome. But, you know, one of the things that I've always felt that um, I've been fairly intuitive it, uh, with is when to go and when to stay and when to change. And I felt very strongly that this is the right time for me personally um, to make a change. Um, you know, I think this job, I've been coaching 32 years and, you know, eight years even as a player, so 40 years in the game. And in fact, my dad was a coach and so I remember watching film in our house on a 16 millimeter projector, and so it's been a lot of years of football, 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 and and um, you know never had a break from it. And so I think when you know you become a head coach too, these years can become very heavy. You know, 14 years is a lot of years uh, at, at this at this position, and it becomes a lot of you know frustration and anxiety and stress and and some of the excitement and positivity and optimism can kind of be pushed away. And that's never a way to leave, live your life. And, you know, I pay close attention to that. And, um, and so, you know, when you think about things and, and uh, you know, there's a, a quote that I heard a while ago um, in the fall sometime, I think it was one of those Eastern philosophers or something that said, you know, a man has two lives to live and the second one begins when he realizes he only has one. And that thing was been ringing in my ears loud and clear. And, um, and so, so for personally, I felt it was time for a change. And then I really felt, you know, it was in our program, it was time for a change that I think the foundation is, is really good and really solid. Um, but I, I just, you can feel like it just needs a little new direction and a boost of energy. And, it, you know, it doesn't need to be blown up, but it does need to be tweaked and changed. And so this thing for me has worked out uh, better than planned because I don't know if I had a plan. But if I could script it this way where one of our guys and, you know, Jimmy to take over, it couldn't be better because I have no doubt that this program is going to continue to grow. It's going to take the next step, and we'll be back to winning Pac-12 championships. And, um, yeah, sorry, Jimmy. That's these guys to put that pressure on you. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but I do believe that. You know, we got great kids in this program. This university is second to none. I told our, our young players yesterday that I know a lot of them were looking at me in shock and you know you just got me to come here and the one thing that I do not feel bad about 
is getting those guys to come here because I think this program is second to none. I think this university is second to none, and I think that about this community. And then who's taking this program over? It's only going to get better. And so I'm excited for those guys. They don't know it, that it's going to get better, but I know it. And I'm excited to see where this thing goes. And so, you know, from, from the bottom of my heart, so many of you people in here that's helped make this thing happen for the last six years, I appreciate you. And I'm grateful and uh, very, um, you know, life-changing, life-changing um, part of my life in such a positive way. And so thank you for that. All right, so uh, first of all, thank you for being here today and coming last minute. Obviously, it's a little bit different of a press conference for us, so bear with me because I want to share some thoughts about Coach Pete before I introduce Jimmy. Uh, first of all, it's been seven years this week since we hired Coach Peterson as our head football coach, and um, I remember it like yesterday. We were so excited because we knew we had the right guy at the right time for Husky football. And we knew that we were getting a, a great football coach, and we understood the success that this man had, and we had full confidence that he was going to build an incredible program, which he's done. Um, but what we didn't know at the time is that we were going to inherit this exceptional human being, and, and we didn't anticipate the impact that he was going to have on our lives well beyond football. Some of you in this room only see this guy as a football coach. But for those of us that have had the opportunity to work closely with him, we see him as so much more. We see him as a husband and a father and a son. We see him as a leadership guru, best book recommender ever, right, coach? Um, he's a father figure. He's a mentor and a friend. And we see him as a caring and thoughtful man with a great smile who all he wants is for everybody else around him to be exceptional. So when Coach Pete came into this deal, he changed the tone for this football program, and it really had a ripple effect for all of athletics because he set the bar with this crazy high expectation. You know, he saw that we could be way better than I think any of the rest of us saw. And when he did that, he also did it with the utmost integrity and character. He did the right thing all the time, despite the demands, despite the pressures, despite the noise of a job as difficult as him or is difficult for him. Um, the other thing he did that I think is, is so cool is that he reconnected us to our purpose. You know, what's this thing all about anyways, this college sports thing? It's about developing kids and helping them become the best versions of themselves. Um, so when I think about Coach Pete, I think that's his legacy, that he built a championship program with championship values, and he changed a lot of lives along the way. Uh, this job's crazy. Um, these people, you know, we have a lot of staff members here. Thank you for being here today. Um, we spend a lot of time together. These jobs become our lives. And so we become family. And so I'm not going to lie. This thing's emotional. It's been hard for a lot of people. It really has. But um, it's also exciting and awesome. And um, we have nothing but love and respect for Coach Pete and admiration, really, for the courage it's taken for him to make to make this decision um, moving forward. We're also getting ourselves mentally prepared because he's not going away. And um, he's gonna help us and me and advise us. And we've had conversations over the years about leadership and built for life and how to make this athletic department better, how to make this university better. And so I'm so excited that we're gonna continue to be able to work together. But until then, I just wanna thank you, coach. Barb, where are you? Love ya. Sammy, Sammy here? Is he hiding? Yeah. Um, Sammy and Jack, you guys dedicated your lives to this place, and, and you, um, you made this community better, and you made this university better, and Coach, you gave us a program in really, really solid position to move forward. So thank you, Coach Pete. Appreciate you. All right, but here we are now, seven years later, right? We're always moving forward. And... Um, we are, are we're, we're in that same type of position, right, where we're excited and we're fired up because we have the right guy at the right time for Husky football and Coach Jimmy Lake. Uh, Jimmy's had the opportunity to work side by side uh, with Coach Pete 
helping to build this incredible culture. Uh, he knows what this place is all about. He knows what this program's about, and he knows where this program can, can go. Jimmy's a hell of a coach, hell of a recruiter, and we've all witnessed it. You know, we've seen what he's capable of doing, and we felt his impact already in this program. And because of that, he's been a highly sought-after guy. And he's had plenty of opportunities to leave this university, but he's always stayed, and he stayed because he wanted to be here, because he loves being a Husky. He knows how special this place is. He knows how good we can be here, and he knows he can do it the right way at Washington. Jimmy's always been on my radar as a possible replacement for Coach Beat, should this day ever come. I've had the chance to observe him, visualize him in this role, and I know he's the perfect fit for us moving forward. It's really unique and it's really special when you have a guy already in your program that's ready and able to make, take the next challenge in the program. Coach Pete's confidence in Jimmy, his recommendation for him for this job, and his mentorship also played a huge uh, role in my decision to name Coach Lake our head coach. I've been so lucky and it's just been life changing for me to be around these guys since they came here uh, almost seven years ago. And, and part of that has been I've been able to develop my own relationship and, and observations about uh, Coach Lake. And, and here's what I know. He's really hungry for this opportunity. It's good. It's a really good thing. He's got crazy energy. He's a fierce competitor. He has, he's an incredibly great teacher of the game. And he has a unique ability to connect with his students. And he cares about them both on and off the field. He also has a lot of confidence about his vision and future for this program. So here's the good news. The future is bright for Husky football. It's bright and I, yeah, it's awesome. And I'm just really excited for Jimmy and for Michelle and his family that are all here today. And I'm also excited for our student athletes and our future student athletes who are gonna thrive under his leadership. So it's my honor this morning to introduce you all to the next head football coach at the University of Washington, Jimmy Lake. Well, good morning. First off, I wanna thank my family, uh, my wife, Michelle, my sons, Jimmy Jr., Bronson, my daughters, Faith and Jenna. There's no way we are here without you. This has been an incredible journey, and this wouldn't have happened without you. I love you. I want to thank President Kause, Jen Cohen, the administration for entrusting this, this opportunity to me to lead this glorious football program. And I want to thank Chris Peterson, who's been a mentor to me, who's been a friend to me and will continue to be a friend and a mentor to me as I move forward in this next journey. And really it begins there. It begins uh, that the pursuit of a, being a head football coach began when I joined Chris Peterson's staff at Boise State. You know, uh, way back when I, I thought I was gonna be a, own a business somewhere. I, I, got a, I got a business degree at Eastern Washington University. I was talked into, into coaching. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try to be the best defensive back, defensive back coach I can be. Made it all the way up to the, to the National Football League. Bounced around as coaches do. And my last stint with, in Tampa Bay, our head coach was fired and our whole staff was released. And I had always had just a tremendous fondness. Uh, uh, I just loved the way Chris Peterson's programs looked on the football field. They always look like they're having fun. They always tackled well. They always look like they're in position. And we would evaluate their players in the NFL and go, wow, there's something crazy going on with this Boise State football program. And I wanted to go see what the secret sauce was all about. I really, really, I was just like, man, this, 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 there's something about Chris Peterson in this program over at Boise State. And that's when they were winning Fiesta Bowls and going 11-0, 12-0. And fortunately, I was able to work with him. He hired me as the, as the defensive back coach, and it didn't take very long for me to figure out what the secret sauce was. His Built for Life program 
is, is, is unmatched and unreal, and it is for real. He truly cares about his players on the field, but even more so off the field. He wants to make sure that there is uncommon unity all the way throughout the coaching staff, the whole building, and obviously with the players. And so the journey began. We uh, had a, a good stint there at Boise State for two years. And then thankfully, I, I got to tag along for his ride here at the University of Washington. And then I was able to see his whole plan implemented from day one and completely turn a program around in 180 degrees into his vision. And so I'm very thankful I was able to work with this man for eight years. And I know the recipe. I've seen the recipe. And I'm going to copy the recipe. <laughs> An unbelievable foundation has been laid. The Built for Life program will continue in his legacy here while I'm at the University of Washington. The uncommon unity that is all the way throughout our building will continue. You know, I've coached for a number of different teams at the pro level and college level, and I've never been on any tighter team than a Chris Peterson coached football team. And so now, here we go. I'm the head football coach. <laughs> and for the guys that know me, I am in a very aggressive, attack mode type personality. And that's where we're going to take this thing. Coaching the defensive backs, coaching the defense, I always want to be aggressive. I always want to be on attack mode. And that is going to be bled all the way through now into our offense and into our special teams, but also how our students will attack their academics. And our players will also be developed. You know, I take a lot of pride, um, obviously, when I was a defensive back coach of developing these guys, not only to become NFL players, but also become the best versions of themselves. And that'll also go throughout our whole team. Offense, defense, special teams, trying to make these guys the best players they can become, but also the best young men they can become. Our team's going to play smart. They're going to understand situational football. And this is a, a thing that I definitely brought from the NFL ranks that I think our team and our defensive backs and our defense has been able to really take a hold of and take themselves to the next level. And again, in all phases of our program, we will play smart. We will understand situational football. We will try to outfox and outsmart our opponent. And um, I can't wait to get started on that portion. And Jen kind of mentioned it, but uh, you know, for the, uh, for the fans, the dog fans that don't know me and the recruits out there that don't really know me, I am extremely competitive. My family can attest to that. I have this, uh, I have this weird way of always uh, turning everything into a competition. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I want that to be also uh, what our program is all about. We're going to try to win at everything, whether it's a ping pong match up in the recruiting lounge or definitely on Saturday afternoons out here in Husky Stadium. And I have a lot of passion for this game. I have a lot of passion for the X's and O's and the strategy. Uh, if you ever walk into my office, there's probably a whole bunch of stuff drawn up on the board. Blitzes here, blitz this, blitzes, blitzes across on this board, maybe a coverage that I've been t uh, tinkering uh, about. NFL Network is going to be playing. I'm going to be watching an NFL game on one TV, a college game on another TV, and I'm always going to be searching and, and scratching and clawing trying to find uh, that next best blitz coverage or an offensive play, which Coach Pete and I always talk about. I, and I'll text him, hey, Coach, you see that play we were just talking about? The Seattle Seahawks just scored on it. I have a truly passion. I'm passionate about the football strategy, and I want all three phases of our, of our team to be that way. And, uh, you know, that's gonna, I think it's going to give our team and also our players the best chance to win. And so with that, I just want to tell you guys I'm excited, I'm hungry to just really explode. This foundation has been set, and I'm ready to get this thing started. Go dogs. Seattle Times. Jimmy, 
Uh, Jen mentioned the opportunities that you had to leave. Was the reason you stayed for this day, and did you and Chris ever discuss that this transition might take place? You know, the reason I stayed um, is the culture that he built. You know, at the beginning of my career, I bounced around a lot like a lot of coaches do, you know, climbing the coaching ladder. And being in the culture that he has created, where our coaches get along, our players get along, um, it's a culture of excellence where we're all striving uh, to be the best version of ourselves. And I've been on a lot of staffs where it is not that way. And there's a lot of staffs uh, currently right now that they know it's not that way. And I know I just had a, a golden opportunity to stay with this man. And it would have to take an unbelievable job for me be, to be able to leave here. And so uh, that was the reason I stayed. Uh, was because of Chris Peterson. Uh, Mike for LCL Times. Uh, Chris, um, you talked about in the, in the fall, you know, the Eastern philosopher and a quote ringing through your head. And I'm curious, you know, when did you start to think about this very seriously and when did you actually know that this was the right decision? You know, I think in this job, you're, you're 180 miles an hour at all times, but there's certain times during the year, certainly when the seasons end, uh, you know, and that's through recruiting. You get a chance to kind of reflect back, and I do that every single year. And, um, and so I'm always evaluating those type of things. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things that hit me was after the Rose Bowl, you know, a year ago, um, having a chance to reflect a couple months after that, um, how much I did not appreciate that game like I should have. You work your whole life to get there. And I didn't really appreciate the week. I didn't appreciate the game like I need to. You know, as a kid growing up looking at that game, and I think that was one of the things that really hit me loud and clear. And, and so, you know, you start to pay attention to that. And, and, uh, but then you go, and you put all your heart and soul into what you're doing. And I didn't decide to... Um, you know, step away that I was going to step away until probably two or three days before we played Washington State. And then I knew, and then I knew in my heart that that was going to be the right thing to do. Chris, uh, Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Do you, I'm over here. Where are you, Tim? Oh, yeah. Do you think you'll coach again? Um, yeah, so I'm not falling into that trick question, Tim. <laughs> No, I'm definitely never going, you know, I know how that goes. You see all these coaches say that, and then two weeks, two years later, they're back. My whole plan is to get rested, to get recharged, and get redirected. Like, the one thing I know is that I'm not ready to do nothing, you know. Um, and I just got to figure out where all this energy and this passion and inspiration goes. And I don't want it to be on the football field. Um, and I'm excited to see where this whole thing takes me because I do have a lot of thoughts and ideas and, um, you know, passion for helping others. Um, I've been through so many things in this business, so many things, that I think I can help other people uh, in this business and maybe outside of it. And I have a lot to learn as well. Like, I'm excited to really go learn some things that I haven't been able to figure out in my mind as well as I would like to. So that's, you know, that's where I am um, right now. And um, we'll just see where this goes. Chris, uh, Dave Softy Mahler, KJR Radio. <laughs> Were there certain things about this job in this city that made the coaching thing harder for you as opposed to what you dealt with at Boise State? You know what? In a lot of ways, it made it easier. Um, and I said that before that I was so surprised. I mean, I, we, we love Boise and being over there, but it's a small place. And so everywhere you go, everybody knows about, you know, Boise State football and the coach. And, you know, those of you that know me, that's not really my style. And so when I came over here in this big city and walking around, and there's like, I think about 
four million people that don't even know football happens here, even with the Seahawks and Huskies being here. And I loved it. And, and so in some ways it was easier, you know, in terms of that. In some ways it was easier because of the resources that we have here. I mean, I can't say enough to Husky Nation. I mean, this is one of the main reasons I came here because of this stadium and the greatest setting and what it looks like on Saturdays when it's packed. And I have more respect for them this year than ever before because we didn't win the games, all the games like we have and wanted to, and they still showed up. And like, you know, that's, I mean, that, that's what I'm like. This place is unbelievable and it's going to continue just to get better. Michelle Led. Michelle Ledka, Q13 Fox. Sorry, I don't know how to work a microphone. Um, Chris, this new role that you're going to be taking, will it be specifically with the football program, or do you hope to use it across all aspects of mm. the athletic department? Great question. <laughs> I think we're trying to figure out. I don't see it being very involved with the football program. Jimmy and our boys, you know, they, they got their plan, and they're ready to roll, and the last guys they need to be hearing from is me. Um, and so, you know, Jen and I will figure out exactly how I can help whoever around here, you know, I just really, there's so many things that I'm opinionated about and passionate about that aren't always right, but I got strong <laughs> opinions on that now I can't wait to tell everybody. <laughs> um, and we'll just see how that goes. Uh, Lauren Kirschman from the News Tribune. Jen, how quickly after you were told did you know that Jimmy was the right choice? And what made you sure that you didn't need a search, that you already had the guy? Yeah, great question. So when you're in this job, you're always prepared for a transition. Always. That's how this industry works. So, um, you know, just like Coach is always evaluating how he's doing and how he's feeling about his work, I'm doing the same thing about this program. Um, what's the state of the program? What do we need for this program? So. Um, that when something like this happens, you're ready to go. So I've been thinking about Jimmy for a long time. Um, there was no plan. Uh, Chris didn't, you know, give me enough hints that we were getting to this point. Um, but I always expected something like this. And so um, I think that there's a lot of different ways you can go in when you hire a head coach. And I think it always starts with, with the profile and what you're looking for. And, and I had a an idea of what that profile would look like and what this program was going to need if he left. And the amazing news is that Chris left it in such good condition. And when you have uh, cultures like that, uh, it's, it's incredible if you can actually find somebody in the program to then take the next step. And the person in the program has to have some s skills and talents that in many ways are a little bit different to, to then take, build off of something and make it even better moving forward. And so to me, it was just obvious, you know, that we had the guy right here in Jimmy Lake. So, you know, we worked quickly and, um, but it wasn't a quick decision because I've been thinking about it for a while. Christian Capel from The Athletic. Chris, being that you knew the Apple Cup was gonna be your last game, I'm curious if, if that day was any different for you, if you, if you took time to take it in a little bit more and just kind of what that whole day was like, winning the game and everything. and. And also, who else knew it at that time that that was going to be your last game? My wife knew. Um, yeah. What was your other question? Just, <laughs> I, I guess you, you do have the bowl game, obviously, but just what, what the, the day was like. Knowing no, that it's the same. I mean, you're just so focused on playing your best and hoping your guys put their best foot forward, and that's such a, a big game that, you know, I, I really wasn't, nostalgic and walking through and looking at the blades of turf and the people up them and I don't know, I just go. And so, um, you know, it was, I will tell you before the, the game, um, I'm talking to Mike Leach and he comes up and says, hey, how much longer are you gonna do this? And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my God, this guy's a mind reader too. I'm, <laughs> we're in trouble. And so I'm like, oh, we got a good plan today because this guy's honest. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, that was kind of, that kind of loosened the, the mindset for me a little bit. And as always, we had a, a great talk. And, uh, you know, I love this talk after the game even more than our talk before the game. <laughs> Chris, uh, Kind of a, one for Chris, one for Jimmy. You mentioned there's some things that you're passionate about. 
maybe we don't know about those things. We haven't really gotten a chance to know you very well off the field in the last six years. What, what are those things, if you can share with us, that you are passionate about, that you want to kind of dive into? Uh, and then for Jimmy, you mentioned copying the recipe, but obviously you'll put your own stamp on this thing. What are some things that maybe you'll do differently than, than Chris? Yeah, I'm passionate about excellence. I mean, just I love being around people that like do their job at a high, high level. I just that's inspiring to me. But I'm passionate about team building. I'm passionate about leadership. I'm passionate about culture. We hear those words all the time. And I think they're cliches. And I think there's, you know, not a lot of people that have it really figured out on how to build a team and how to build leaders. I'm still learning and figuring that out with all the things that I've been through. And I'm really excited to go learn more and then pass that information on to, you know, different people that I think, you know, want it and, and can help with. And, and that's something that I'm really focused and, you know, directed. And that will happen down the line after, you know, taking a step back for a little bit. Yeah. You, oh, so, you know what I think, um, you know, a lot of teams will, you know, bring the team up and they'll, they'll, they'll get a family break and all those things. And in, in, in a lot of ways at other places, it's really not real, but here it's real. The eight years I've been with coach Peterson, this is real. The team building, the culture building, the uncommon unity. And so that portion, I do know the recipe and our staff knows the recipe. We also have guys that, uh, that are on our staff that have been with Coach Peterson longer than I have, and so that's what I mean by that's going to that's going to remain the same, and it's and it's special. He says he doesn't have it figured out. I think he does have it figured out. <laughs> um, and so you know it's not going to be easy. It's it's still going to be difficult to get you know the whole building rolling in the same direction. But and like I like I mentioned, what's going to be a little bit different is I am passionate about X's and O's. I am passionate about football strategy. It's what has driven me really um, in the beginnings of my career, uh, going all the way up to the National Football League and, and then really taking the next step there. And so that's really what I want to do is, is um, you know, bleed that passion over into all three phases, um, offense, defense, and special teams. And I think that's where we'll be um, a little bit different, um, a little bit more attacking, a little bit more aggressive, um, and that's what I'm excited about. Um, Chris, um, RTL Sports Press Northwest, what about college football coaching from, uh, from when you've been in the big time 14 years ago to now has made the changes, what are the changes that have made this thing more difficult for you? Um, I don't know if it's any one thing. Um, you know, I think it's just over time. And in any industry, it's going to continue to change. And you have to adapt or die. Um, and so, you know, we always say, um, you know, change is inevitable. Growth is optional. And so I think about that around here. And so that's just part of the deal. You just got to figure out how we're going to continually stay at the top and try to be super competitive with whatever's thrown our way. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of things that evolved in the game, college football game, that are really for the better. There's some things out there for the student athletes that are, that are better, which is awesome. And we've all been waiting for those things. And there's some things that are, you know, interesting to see how we, you know, work through those things that are coming our way. Um, but it's not any one thing. It's, it's just, you know, it's one of those jobs that is um, extremely heavy on the balance of your life. And one of the, you know, I was, you know, the definition of success, you know, there's a million of those and it's all to, for individuals to come up with their own. And I have a couple, but one of them is to be able to control the quality and balance of your life. And you cannot do that in this job. There is no balance, you know, um, it's, it's, it's out of whack, it's crazy. And, and we're one of those guys and staffs that don't sleep in the office, which a lot of them do. We would never do that. But it's still just, it's just nonstop. When you go on vacation, when you have 100 and plus teenagers, 
that as we all know, I love those guys, but it is the dumbest crew in America. <laughs> and that's just to get started with the game of college football, right? So there's just always stuff going on that you got to help them solve and issues to solve. And it's just hard to ever get away from that. And so, and that's just to, to get it started, let alone the recruiting and the parents and the media and the academics and what, and it's all awesome. It's great stuff. But after a while, it can, it can load you up and, and it can become counterproductive in terms of not being passionate and energized and positive in terms of attacking your day. And when it's not like that, you need to go do something different. Kim Grenolds from dogman.com. Coach, a couple years ago, um, you were kind enough to let us in on your Built for Life presentation or a small mm -hmm. portion of it. And uh, we got a chance to see how powerful it was and how important it is to you. When we talk to recruits, they talk about it. We talk to players, almost talk about it more than they do football. Um, it's obvious it's a passion of yours. Where do you see yourself taking that first? And then also when coaches talk about taking a step back and recharging like Urban Meyer, mm -hmm. They come and join the other side. <laughs> has it crossed your mind? Yeah. Um, it has not really crossed my mind. I haven't got there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just think this, that, like, um, this football thing is so awesome. And it's such a game-changing opportunity for these kids to come play here. It's just to be on that field and be – I mean, there's just nothing like it for these guys. But to me, that's just part of this. And that's one of the reasons that we're here at Washington. Like, because I think this place can do so much more. We can do so much more for these guys as coaches. And a lot of them do, and some don't. But then you get yourself into a place like the University of Washington that has so much to offer in the city of Seattle. And the unbelievable people here that can help mentor these kids and get in their mind that, yeah, we're going to play this football as long as we can but we need to help prepare them for like when football's over. That is a bad feeling. We've all been there, whether we played a sport or not. Like when you get out of college and now what? I'm thrown to the real world. What it can be even worse for these guys because they've been so structured and it's all their whole life is involved around football. And for us to just be here talking about football, it would be ridiculous that if we don't, we can still be having an elite football team and do unbelievable things, but that's just part of the, the of what we can do for these kids. And so call it whatever you want to do it, but it's help them prepare these guys for the future and really pound this into their head. And we can, Jimmy will do it all here. I mean, and that's the beauty of coming here to Washington. You can have it all with these coaches that are going to continue on with like, how can we help these guys? Um, and there's so much more we can do. And I'm excited to, to see them do more even. Hey, Jimmy. Masvida Barrera from Cascadia Sports Dognet. You're the second uh, African American head coach at this university. What does that say about the values of this uh, university and then the opportunity it provides for you? Yeah, uh, great question. You know, and going back to the previous question, that's another huge reason why um, my family wanted to stay here. We love the city of Seattle. It is an unbelievable place uh, to raise a family. It's diverse in all different types of ways. It's a forward-thinking city. It's a smart city. Um, and that is another reason why uh, I wanted to continue living in this city. And my family wanted to stay here. And so, yeah, it's, a, it's obviously a big deal. I've received a, a lot of texts from, uh, you know, coaches um, that, I've, that I've worked with and coaches that I have not worked with. And they're very proud, and um, I'm, I'm definitely very proud. Uh, Chris, I'm curious, you know, when you're around a guy like Jimmy for seven, eight years, however long it's been, at what point did you know or did you feel this guy is capable of something like this, and what really sold you on that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know when that point is. Um, I've just been around Jimmy for a long time, and – you know, he just has all the qualities that you would like for somebody to lead a pro. I mean, he's really smart. He's super competitive to a fault sometimes. And that's awesome. I mean, because you need that guy in there when things aren't right. Like putting the gloves on and it's like, let's go. And so that's, that's awesome. And he's a really good person. Um, 
and he's great with people and all those things and you know everything that he's talking about that he's all about um, you know he's a wonderful teacher and coach I mean you, nobody knows how these things go you, you don't know but if it was ever stacked up to like okay this guy needs a chance to roll I've never seen one that's you know more prepared and ready that hasn't, you know, actually been in the chair. I mean, there's no doubt. Jimmy. Uh, Elise Woodward with IMG, uh, back here, Coach, over here. Um, coach, you talk about your advisory role. What advice do you give Jimmy as he steps over to the head job? You know, I've given all these guys so much advice. That's what I'm saying. They don't need to hear any more advice from me. <laughs> I mean, they're, I think they're pretty happy to see me like, uh, yeah, go give that advice to somebody else. We got it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my, you know, I don't know. After a while, this thing wears off. You know, I think about my poor wife. She's not going to want to hear my advice either. You know, it's like I don't have anyone else to talk to. But, you know, I do want to say, you know, Jimmy started with his family, and um, I didn't because I'd start crying. Like I said, but you can't do this without an unbelievable family. Next question. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, your staff, uh, and I guess Jen as well, how much autonomy does Jimmy have over his assistant coaches, and um, what's your plan for your offensive coaching staff moving forward? Yes, sir. Just any, you know, our head coaches have the – the opportunity and the responsibility to run their programs how they choose. So our job is to support them in the decisions that they make. You know, and, and thankfully, you know, this, this obviously just happened and surprised a lot of people, including myself. And so um, we have a couple of weeks to, to figure all that out. We're going to get through the bowl game. Everything right now is going to remain the same. I mean, Coach Pete is still going to lead us through the bowl game. We're going to try to send him out the right way. And, um, you know, we'll have time to, to figure all that out, and we'll make those decisions um, after the bowl game. Uh, Chris, Josh Gershom on Daily Utah. Over here. Uh, I was just wondering when you uh, told the players and um, they heard the news, if there were any reactions that surprised you or what <laughs> what came about with that. Um, yeah, that was a hard day yesterday. And, um, no, I, I, I think, you know, I think a lot of them were extremely, extremely surprised and probably didn't know what to say. And um, so they're, they're all digesting this thing. But I want to go back to, you know, what I said before. Like, if I thought that this was going to set us back and not move us forward, I would have never done this at this time. Like, I wouldn't do that to this program. And I know that I could stay here and fight and we would get this thing back to where everybody's – excited and comfortable with. But I have no doubt this is the better thing for these kids and, these, and this program and this fan base for Jimmy to go and inject his vision and his energy into this. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to reignite those players. They don't know it right now. You know, they don't know what they don't know, but I do. And so it's going to be a good thing in the, in, in the, in the long haul in the big picture. And so they'll work through it. And, you know, Jimmy and I were talking. I mean, the best thing for those guys is going when they come back on Friday and we get to go practice with them a little bit and get back to what we do and things will calm down.